Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're gonna talk about using derivatives for curve sketching. The first and second derivatives are very useful in um, giving us information about the graph of a function and enough information that we can draw a fairly good representation of that graph. So if we take a look at this function here, what I want uh, to point out is that in this interval up to this point, we know that this function is increasing, so f of x is increasing, and we also know that the derivative or the slope of the curve is positive. If we were to look at this section from here to about this point here, we see that the function is decreasing and we also can see that the slope of the curve or slope of a tangent line to the curve in anywhere in that interval would be negative. Similarly, back to this interval, from this point on, we can see again that the function or the y value is increasing. And again, the slope of the curve or the slope of the tangent line to the curve at any point along this interval would be positive. So by knowing the intervals where the derivative is positive, we know that's the interval where the function's increasing. If we know the interval where the uh, derivative is negative, then we also know the interval where the function is decreasing. We also want to know where the function changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing, and it will be at these special points. These are called extreme points. And in particular, this one would be called a relative max point. And the reason it's called relative, it means relative to all of the points around it. You also might hear the word local max point. When you see global max point, or you see it discussed, they're talking about a maximum point for the whole function. This isn't the maximum point for the whole function because we have some values of y that are greater over here. But in this local area or relative to other points, it would be considered the maximum. When our function goes from decreasing to increasing, it will go through what's called a minimum point. And again, this is a relative minimum point or a local minimum point because there are y values or function values that are less than it on this graph. So, but in terms of the other points around it, it yes, it's considered a, a minimum point. So those points become very important in drawing your graph. If you can find those extreme points, then you know that's where the function changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. And those points have a special characteristic. If we were to take a tangent line at that point, it would actually be horizontal, which means that the slope is zero, which means that the derivative is zero at that point. The same thing for this relative minimum point. And from now on, I'm just gonna call it max point and min point. So this min point, this minimum point, has a horizontal tangent line as well. So we know the derivative at that point is zero. That's gonna be true for all extreme points, whether they're relative or global. They will all have a horizontal tangent line. So if we can find those points, and then we'll know that's where the function changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. What I wanna point out is that once you find those points, you can't assume that they're extreme points. There are times when you can get a point that has a derivative equal to zero and it's not a max or a min point. It doesn't happen that often, but it can happen. So you are always going to need to test your point to make sure it's a max or minimum point. So let's put this into practice. To find any maximum or minimum points, we're gonna go through these steps. We're gonna start off by finding the derivative and we'll go through the steps using this example. So the derivative here is negative one minus two x. Next step, we're gonna set the derivative equal to zero and solve for x. 
The reason is we know that extreme points have to have a derivative equal to zero. There's the slope of the tangent line at that point is zero. So we set it equal to zero and we solve. So what I do know is that this function will have um, a slope of zero at this point. Next step we need to test. We have to determine if this x value is the x coordinate of a maximum point, a minimum point, or neither. And there's three ways that we can do the test. I'm going to do the first derivative test. If you need to learn those other tests um, and, and you're expected to use them or you want to, to use them, feel free to do that. But I'm just going to focus on using the first derivative test because it's the most efficient of those two and it always works unlike this test. So the way that we're going to test is we're going to test what the sign of the first derivative is on either side. So I'm going to make a number line and I'm just going to pick a value in this interval. So to the left or less than negative one half, or I like picking integers. So I could pick negative one. F prime of negative one, so it means the derivative when X is negative one, will be negative one minus two times negative one. So that's negative one plus two, it would be positive one. So the, the thing I'm looking at is the sign. So the derivative in this interval, and we could choose any value of X less than negative one half, you can plug into your first derivative, and you should get a positive value. We do the same thing in this interval. So we'll choose an X value greater than negative one half. I'll pick zero. So we're gonna find the derivative when X is zero, and that value will be negative one minus zero, which will be negative one, which is negative. And we could pick any value greater than negative one half and plug it in and we would get a negative derivative. So what this means is that the function, if, if the first derivative is positive, the function is increasing. If the first derivative is negative, means the function is decreasing. So with this visual, hopefully you can see that the, the point uh, where x is equal to negative one half would need to be a maximum point. And then my last step, find the corresponding y value. So if y is equal to 20 minus x minus x squared at x equals negative one half, y would equal 20 minus negative one half minus negative one half squared. We could write it as a decimal or a fraction. So we'd have 20.5 minus one quarter, so that would be 20.25, or we could express that as 81 quarters. So we know that this is a max point because the derivative on the left was positive, the derivative on the right was negative. So if I were to draw this graph at x equals negative one half and y value at 20.25, we know it's a maximum point. We know the function is increasing before that point and decreasing after that point. That would give us a rough idea of what the graph looked like. Let's try another example. We're gonna find the max min points of this particular function. So we're going to start off by finding the derivative. Three x squared minus four x plus one. We set the derivative equal to zero and we solve. This is a quadratic function, so we could use the quadratic formula to, to solve, but if you're noticing that it's factorable, then you can do that as well. So we can check this, 3x times x, we'll foil it, gives me 3x squared minus 3x minus 1x gives me minus 4x plus 1. My factor theorem says that when I have a product equal to zero, the only way that can happen is if at least one of the factors is zero. So either three X minus one is equal to zero or X minus one equals zero. So I get a solution if that's equal to zero or if that's equal to zero. So three X equals one, so X equals one third. 
and when I solve this, x equals 1. So there are actually two zero derivative points to this function. Let's do a test. Again, I'm going to use my number line. So because I have two points, there's actually three intervals that I need to test. So we're going to test in this interval. Choose any value. I'll pick zero because it's the easiest. We put a zero in for our first derivative and we get a positive one. So that's positive in that interval. There's also a shortcut that you can use when your derivative is factored. You can take that value that you choose. If we put a zero in here, we get a negative one. If we put a zero in this factor, we get a negative one. A negative one times a negative one is positive. And you don't even need to know what the value is. You just need to know whether it's positive or negative. So that means the function's increasing in that interval. Let's choose a value of x in between 1 third and 1. I'll choose 1 half. I don't really want to get into finding the value, the exact value, so I'm going to use my shortcut. If I have 3 times 1 half, it's 3 halves minus 1. That's positive. If I have 1 half minus 1, that's negative. A positive times a negative is negative. So we're going to use the shortcut when we can. So if it's negative, it means the function is decreasing. And if I choose a value of x in this interval, I'll just choose 2. Again, I'm going to use my shortcut. 2 times x is 6, minus 1 is positive, and 2 minus 1 is positive, so a positive times a positive is positive. So the function is increasing. Don't make the assumption that it always changes in each interval. It might not, so just be careful. Actually test in each interval. So therefore we know, you can see visually hopefully, that if the function's increasing to the left and decreasing to the right, that must be a maximum point. Similarly with this point, if it's decreasing to the left and increasing to the right of the point, it must be a min point. And then our last step is to find the y coordinates. So at x equals one third, y will equal one third cubed minus two times one third squared plus one third would be four over 27. Next one will be easier. At x equals one, y will equal one cubed minus two plus one. So that will be zero. So therefore, one third, four twenty sevenths, is a max point, and one zero is a min point. So if I wanted to draw that one third and four twenty sevenths, one and zero, so the function is increasing to that point then it's decreasing till that point, and then it's increasing again. So that gives me a rough graph of that. And you could label your points, and you could write minimum point, maximum point, whatever you're required to do. I want to continue with some more examples, but I'll do that in the next video. See if you've got a few you can practice just um, finding max min points. Okay, take care, and we'll see you.